while I'm uh, giving this uh, presentation, we'll be going over uh, mining the data gap and how a data fabric backed by a knowledge graph can actually expose holes in your data that you think you have, but actually do not possess uh, to make use of. Here you are looking at a collection of over 60 different data sources. Some pulled from JSON repositories, some pulled from SQL, some pulled from flat dumps of files. This is generally how the data landscape looks in most enterprises. You have some data that's connected, some data that is by itself, and other data that is relational and only valuable when it is denormalized. Through ANZO, uh, we can bring all these sources of information in and turn it from this picture into something that looks a lot more robust and relatable. Here we're looking at an example of things in space. So these are things that are related to satellites or communication devices or ground stations that communicate with things in space. And we have a relationship of everything that exists from the source view of the data. This is a non-destructive view of the data that actually categorizes things based on the source of information. So if we have a particular satellite coming off a particular feat, such as OSCAR here, which is the, uh, the World Meteorological Organization's classifications for weather satellites, we can actually classify on OSCAR satellite frequency, and we can bring in that normalized data, turn it into a relationship, and connect it to everything else. When this happens, we now have a model of all the information that we pulled from all our different data sources. From here, we can distill out objects that are such as satellites, such as comm stations, such as entities, organizations, countries, and therefore. One of the powers of this, though, is noting that we can find where data we believe to have come, uh, coming in, not actually coming in. So there is a gap in the data, even if the model and the you know, 3.5 normalized form in your giant you know, galaxy star pattern um, it says it should be there, but it really isn't. And this is what a lot of enterprises struggle with. How do I know about the data that I think I know, but I actually don't know? And this is where the data gap occurs. As an example here, these, these are a list of satellites, things orbiting in space. And we're gonna be looking at an orbiting objects list. This could be debris, could be actual communicative, communicative satellites and other rocket boosters and other such things. And they're gonna have a series of capabilities on them. These are constructed out of a set of sources that we can actually investigate both by the source itself. So for every one of these satellites, we can actually look to see how many sources we're getting. And this is a very high level view. And you might notice, well, of course we have information for everything. All our data sources are reporting for almost every one of our uh, objects that we're currently looking at. Then we can also look at it from a data type heat map. And we could say, oh, well, we have country information and com information for every one of our satellites. This gives us a high level view that I'm sure everyone's seen in a normalized database. But we can take it a little bit further. We can drill down a little bit and just based on selecting a few things, such as we want to look specifically at Chinese satellites, satellites that are operated by the nation of China. We really want to look at satellites that we're particularly interested in in the last few years. So we can fast it down to, let's say, the last um, since 2018. We can then uh, classify based on classification of orbit and get down a little bit lower. So we actually are starting to now figure out data that we're actually looking at. It's not this big high level picture, but data that is actually actionable by us. And we're wanting to investigate it. And so these are all the, the things that we know about that match this criteria in our world. And you may notice that we have a lot of gaps already just from the tabular view of things. Uh, some things just are in orbit, some things have comms with them. And if we know something about satellites, especially low orbiting satellites, is they all have communicative capabilities. Otherwise, how do you communicate with the satellite? So we can go to our data type heat map and we can notice that when this uh, gives us a new model that we actually have a lot of disparate data. Yes, some data is very well filled out to the point where we have multiple sources of information giving us uh, you know, up to eight sources for the same exact data type, such as the country or the current uh, ephemera set or the entity that it, that it belongs to. But other ones, we have a lot fewer uh, and much more sparse data, such as you can see here, the navigational capabilities are only present on a couple of these satellites. And the comms capabilities, and including what bands they communicate over and such like that are, are very disparate. And then we can look back to see well, okay, now that we know those data types are disparate, who's reporting the information that I actually care about? And one of the things here you'll notice is that we have from, you know, uh, these various data sources along the bottom, that some are very robust and give us a lot of information about specific objects. 
Other ones have gaps where there should, others have a lot of information. And some of them are completely sparse that we may have modeled this information coming in and we said, hey, we should have this information coming in, but nothing's being reported. So this is a high level uh, two-dimensional kind of tabular view, but we can get even more specific than this. We can actually look at some of these satellites uh, connected to each other. Uh, let's say the Galfin satellites here that have almost no information on them and go, can we actually identify based on a analyst point of view, what this would be like if we wanted to say, hey, what, are, what do we know about these satellites? So here's a view of all the satellites or a set of satellites that have been launched from this particular center that are owned by Chinese, uh, China that have uh, the Galfin series on them. But we're looking now to find that calm capability. We noticed that the calm capability wasn't, pretty, wasn't very well described. So we're going to go into our sources model and we're going to uh, say, hey, for our capabilities, let's, let's get a radio frequency. We know what radio frequency is. And you can already see that we have a one connection to it. What if I wanted to see all the satellites that didn't have a, a radio frequency connection that launched from you? Because this is what I'm looking at. I'm very interested in this. How would I go about doing that? One of the powers of a graph is that we can actually look at degrees of separation and walk the graph. And we can give a query, let it churn for a little bit and start building something. And what it will do is we'll start navigating out and going how many connections and hops up to five are between the capability classification of having radio frequency communication. So in other words, not debris, not uh, a rocket booster or a dead satellite, but something that is that we know to have uh, radio frequency communication capabilities. So what we can do is we can go between the radio frequency capability and the launch site capability and say, hey, for everything that's launched off here, that isn't a rocket booster, that isn't debris, let us actually link things together and see what's there. Because by doing so, we'll also see what wasn't connected. And as you can see clearly in this graph, we have all these different satellites that were launched from here that have communication capabilities. But these satellites here, these specific ones do not possess the capability. And why is that? They should. These are all from the same sources of information. These have some, these don't. And we can start clicking on them and investigating from where do the linked data sources come from? Well, here we can see that it's the 18th SPS, JMS, OSS, UDL. But if we click over here on other things, we notice that, oh, a lot of these data sources have the ITU. And if we remember back from our previous uh, view of the data sources, we notice that ITU is very sparse. So here I can identify from the ITU what, what am I missing? And that's given us now, we know that radio frequencies are missing from these specific satellites. I now have a list of very specific things from sources and I can go back to those initial sources and say, is the information missing? Was it improperly connected? Was it poorly validated? Why is the data missing? And this is how you mine the data gap. You not just find what exists, but you also find what doesn't exist and what isn't connected. And only in a graph database backed by an ontology or what we call a knowledge graph, can you search human-based terms on things that you know, going all the way back to the lineage of the source information and express it in the source information's way of thinking? And this allows us to relate different disparate sources together using a common vernacular, common search, and it exposes very uncommon results. So this concludes the demonstration titled Mind the Data Gap and how you can use a knowledge graph to identify holes within your data.